Hello, good people. Pastor Tony here, and we welcome life, Tampa, Florida. Um, we pray that your day was well today. Uh, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is a choice. Um, my wife says this often. You choose to make the choice. Choose to make the choice? Yeah. You choose to make the choice to be glad. Uh, regardless of the, the issues that you may face, regardless of the tension that may rise against you, regardless of the uh, how great your day is going, choose today to rejoice in what God has created just for you. Uh, we pray your day has been well. We pray that um, you say you may say, Pastor, it wasn't all that great. Uh, but then again, you can say, Pastor, my day, my day was wonderful. If your day was wonderful, we speak greater to you. And if your day was not so good, we speak greater to you. Because you get the revelation that God made this day for me. Um, and so I choose to have my eyes open to his goodness, have my eyes open to his grace, have my eyes open to the revelation of the things that are coming together for my life. God is bringing things together. It says all things, for we know that, for we know this, for what do we know? That all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. It may not be good right now, but it's working out for your good. It may not be um, exactly where you want to be, but it's working out for your good. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Um, now, before we get into it, we are in week two of Note to Self. We thank God for what he has shown us this far. We thank God for where he is taking us right now in this word and in this hour. Uh, God is showing us uh, many different things um, through the scriptures in regarding to this new series that we are in currently right now. And the goal, we're going to get with the goal right now because we're, we're going to press on. We're going to stay focused in this. The goal of this class is to understand that many of life's pitfalls can be avoided and life's victories can be appreciated when we tap into the power of of remembrance. When we tap into the power of remembrance, what do you mean the tap power of remembrance? It's a great and mighty thing that we do, um, that God has given us. Your mind, your spirit, even your brain um, can recall so many different things at that time that brings things back to remembrance, that bring things back to where you were at a time in life as opposed to where you are right now. Um, now, the scripture that we're coming from is Psalm 77 verses 11 through 12 and it's coming from the Good News Translation. So it reads like this, I will remember your great deeds, O Lord. I will recall the wonders you did in the past. I will think about all you have done. I will meditate on all your mighty acts. Now last week we mentioned on this that it is talking about several times it mentions remember recall, think, meditate. It is talking to the spirit man as well as the physical man. Um, because a lot of times we, we think with our brain, you know, we, 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 we are three part beings, trichotomous. We are spirit. We possess a soul. We live in a body and your spirit man is, is three parts, thoughts, will, emotions. Uh, sometimes you like to say, we like to say it like this, thinker, feeler, chooser. But even with that, it is calling us to bring back, bring to mind the things that God has done for us, calling us to bring back to mind. It says, I will, I will remember your great deeds. I will recall the wonders you've done in the past. I will think about, about all that you have done and I will meditate on all your mighty acts. So four different times in these two scriptures, it is calling man to walk in the power of remembrance. It is calling man to, to live in a way and um, to operate in a way that brings forth a call on his life to put things in pers the proper perspective. The word remember, another, another synonym for that is recall. When it says here, recall, 
And a lot of times we don't understand that we can recall. Okay, I recall when the time was, but when it comes to, here you go. When it comes to um, the fuel sensor on a car, say you own a, a 2015 uh, Nissan Altima, and they say uh, there's been a recall on the fuel sensor, or you own a particular toy, and they say, well, the paint on that particular toy, that particular brand, that particular model that was purchased during this particular time has toxic paint, and there is a recall on it. Okay, I understand recall. What does a recall mean? I mean, they're calling for you to bring it back. Uh, if your car has a, a, a faulty fuel sensor, they're calling you to bring it into the dealership. Meaning what? Meaning we don't care what's going on right now. You stop and bring it back. Okay, bring these things back. So the same thing holds true. All the things that God has done in your life. All the things that God has allowed you to accomplish, all the things that God has, has given you the strength and grace to, to uh, walk in victory over. And then there are areas in your life where it seems like things are not really hitting on all cylinders. Things are not really going like I thought they would. Uh, Sometimes we get caught up in the by this time uh, speech. Uh, by this time, I thought I'd be married. By this time, I thought my business would be off the ground. By this time, I thought my ministry would be taken off. By this time, you know, I thought I'd be, uh, I would complete my degree. By this time, by this time. And sometimes when we get caught up in that by this time, we tend to forget uh, where God has brought us to. So when we remember or recall, recall means I got to bring back to mind all the things that he has accomplished in my life. I got to bring back to mind all the things that he has allowed me to overcome, uh, all the things he allowed me to conquer, all the things he's allowed me to navigate through, all the things he allows me to avoid. Hey, Sister Deborah, all the things he allows me to um, step back and reflect on. That's another word that helps remember, reflect. Um, I'm recalling it. I'm bringing I'm calling it back. Why? So I can appreciate where I am. Like we said before, I can avoid many of life's pitfalls. And I can appreciate many of life's victories. I can appreciate the victories. I can avoid the pitfalls when I walk in the, if I tap into the power of remembrance. Because there's a lot of times people will, they don't remember what they, they don't remember the goodness and the great things that God has done for them. And sometimes they, they sit and wallow or they sit and, and brood over what they're dealing with in the present time. Now we know that your memory is powerful because it allows you to, to go, my wife says it like this sometimes, it's like files. It allows you to go in the recourses. I look at it like this. Um, I used to love the Matrix trilogy, okay? The Matrix, you know, I love the trilogy. Anyway, there was a, a section in there where Neo is, is trying to get suited up for weaponry and he goes into this room and all you see is like white, it's just far, as far as I can see. Then all of a sudden it says weaponry and it just, all the, the room f suddenly fills up with all the kind of weapons to choose from, all kind of things that you need for the next assignment. And, and sometimes I think our minds are like that. Our minds are hallways with different doors that lead to other hallways with different doors. Your, minds is, your mind is so complex that even, even when there were issues and things in life that hurt you, your mind to cope, to, to, to protect, your mind will shut and seal that part off. It will shut and seal that, that tragic moment. It will shut and seal uh, uh, the horrible season, a horrible incident off. Now, here's the thing. Your mind will shut it off, but your body sometimes will still react, and you don't know why it's reacting. Um, and so those areas in your life, those, those doors that have been shut, sealed, locked, uh, never to be opened again, is so important to let the Lord have it. Because he designed you, he made you, he can maneuver in there and he can deal with it in a way that allows you to see what it was and you can still flow with him. Um, man, this note to self. Note to self is a term, and I have to read this, is a term that basically it's a reminder to oneself to, to do something important 
when you do something thoughtless or unwise and to make a mental note to yourself not to repeat it. It's twofold. Note to self is this. Basically, it's a reminder to oneself to do something important. And it's also a reminder that that thoughtless thing, that unwise thing you did before, don't do that again. Note to self. You know? Uh, note to self. When I go downtown, pay attention to um, the traffic and make sure I don't go the wrong way up a one-way street. <laughs> note to self. You know? Um, be mindful of different things. Note to self. When I have sugar and salt side by side, make sure I watch what I reach for so when I dump it into my tea, it's not bitter. Note to self. Separate those two. Put one in one area, one in another. Hey, how about this? Label them. A reminder of something important to, to, to keep in mind, to take hold, and a reminder of something that was foolish to avoid. Note to self. We're basically just going to be talking about the next few weeks, and there's going to be different things that we're going to be uh, reminding you of, reminding us of, uh, bringing back to mind, uh, recalling, uh, meditating on. Why? Because the value of your mind is so important to the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of darkness. Because the kingdom of heaven wants you to remember the victories that God has brought you through, the challenges that you've overcome. But the kingdom of darkness wants you to remember the disappointments, the setbacks, the sicknesses, the failures, the fears, um, all the negative moments. And see, the enemy will use moments like, um, he will use things in life that there was some, you know, you had some hiccups in your life uh, trying to get your life on track and things are starting to go pretty good. You're getting traction. You're starting to move again. You're starting to get some things together and all of a sudden you hit a bump. Well, the enemy will remind you of all that stuff way back that you failed at. So why even try to start again? Here you go. You're about to go down that same road again. No, no. Note to self. God has brought me this far and he's not going to leave me. Your mind is your mind should be a sanctuary of all the things that God has brought you through. And only certain things can go in. It's a vault. It's a treasure chest. That when things get when things get to where it doesn't make sense, you can reach back into this and look to see what God has done. Look to see where he brought you from. Okay, here we go. Trying our best to make sure we stay on task. So, first scripture, here we go. All right. Before we get into it, we're going to bow our heads for a moment of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for these, your awesome people, your, your atmosphere changers, your adjusters to environments that you are brought, bringing them into. Father God, we declare that they are anointed, your hearts are anointed to hear to, to receive your word. Their mind is clear. They are sharp and aware. They are awakened. Their spirit is alert. Their neck is outstretched, Father, to receive the word that you have for them tonight. Get, put us on the potter's wheel. Mold us and shape us in your way that we will walk out the things that you have assigned us to do tonight. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. There are some things that I have written down here. Uh, certain scriptures that I have put aside. And I want to make sure that I cover, there's one particular scripture I have written here that I want to make sure I cover tonight before the night is out. So I have it set so you'll know where it is uh, because we mentioned a little bit of it last week. And I don't want to just mention scriptures to you. I want you to know where they are. Why? One, for the purpose that you will have revelation. And two, that you can deliver revelation to someone else. All right. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> First scripture is 2 Peter, chapter 1, verse 10 through 15. 2 <clears throat> Peter, chapter 1, verse 10 through 15. Hey, Auntie Mamie. Good to see you. Yeah. Hmm. 
Okay, now I did say 10 through 15, but I know I'm probably sure I have to back up here in a second, but I'm gonna jump into this where I can and then see if I can, you know, kind of pull all this in context because that's the thing that you have to have when you're dealing with the Word of God. You deal with the Word of God with reverence and you make sure everything is in context. What do you mean context? That what you're talking about is dealing with that particular instance at that particular time and the audience and all that, all the good things that it's, it's rightly divided. As Elder Brown would say, Elder James Brown, you got to rightly divide the word of truth. That's in the Bible. That's right. You got to make sure that you handle this word properly. All right. So here we go. Peter's talking to the church and he, in verse 10, he says this, for this reason, and I'm reading to you from the passion and probably see the good news translation. But I probably will reference also the New King James Version. <clears throat> so, Peter says it like this. For this reason, beloved ones, be eager to confirm and validate that God has invited you to salvation and claimed you as his own. If you do these things, you will never stumble. Wow. Wow. One translation says this, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. And a lot of times we read this call and election sure, and, and we want to just narrow it down to a minister receiving a call into the gospel, a ministry, uh, a pastor receiving his call into the ministry, evangelist, you know, prophet. And we say, when we read that scripture, it's like, make your call and your election sure. I mean, you're called by God to make sure you bring the word. And, and what, what Peter is saying here is this. If, you, if we back up, verses 3 through 7 talks about, you know, the, the virtue. He said, add to your faith, virtue, your virtue, knowledge to knowledge, self-control or temperance. And he said, if you do these things, and there's many other things you add to it, but if you do these things, he said, you will, be, uh, you will, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful. So if I hold on to the virtues of Christ, if I hold on to the, 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 the fruit of the Spirit, and I, and I not only hold on to it, but I cultivate it, not only cultivate it, but I let it develop my life, I will neither be barren, and I will neither be unfruitful. And, and Paul was, I mean, sorry, Peter was saying, therefore, brethren, uh, be even more diligent in these things. He said, for this reason, you know, God has called you to this. You've been chosen through the gospel by accepting Jesus Christ and now that you have accepted Jesus Christ you've been chosen now that you've been chosen you can walk in salvation now that you walk in salvation he's saying this um, you've been called by God to be a light to this world and he said if you remember these things and if you do these things you'll never stumble and he said as a result the kingdom's gates will open wide to you as God choreographs, I love that, as God choreographs your triumphant entrance into the in, into the eternal kingdom. God is choreographing, orchestrating. A, chore, a choreographer does what? A choreographer designs steps. Whether it's a step show, or it's dance, ballet, whatever, choreograph means I'm, I'm staring, you know, you step here, you step here, you spin back, pull back, step forward, pirouette, step, stop right here, step over. You're, you're, you're a choreo, is a choreograph, choreography. Um, here we go. It is, choreograph is steps that have been aligned and designed for you to follow in order to get the maximum output or ma maximum um, experience of what takes place. Even a uh, family reunion, you know, you do the cha-cha, one hop this time, boom, two hops this time, boom, boom, cha the brown. You see, you, you, that those steps you're doing, it's, oh man, it's great. Somebody had to put those steps together. Cha-cha real smooth. Right foot left, right foot stomp, left foot stomp. You know, you had to, they had to get that thing coordinated right. God here is orchestrating. The Bible says your steps are ordered. So God is choreographed where you should go and how you should go. And the only way you'll be able to walk through those ways successfully is to remember the virtues. Um, what are the virtues? Temperance, self-control, knowledge of him, goodness, patience, mercy. Um, if I flow in these things, 
I will neither be barren nor unfruitful. I'm he said, I'm trying to remind you of who you are. And I like, I'm, my wife says, I remind you of who you are and whose you are. And I like how Pastor, um, oh my God, Pastor Derek Rains of Jacksonville, Florida said, and also remind you of who you are not. So you have to know who you are and who you are not. Why? Because if you remember who you are, there's a lot of things that you will not flow into. And if you remember, remind yourself of who you are not, there's a lot of things that you will rise above. So here we go. Not only did he say this, but he flows down to verse 12. And verse 12 through verse 15, I'm, I'm just going to hit it. And I want you to just catch some things. Peter says this. Now, let me re read this. Let me give you the scenario here. Peter is about to be, he's about on his way out. He's about to be crucified. Peter is, no, you mean Jesus. No, Peter. Um, the, the leaders of that day have come against Peter and they're saying it's a matter of time before you're out of here. Uh, the clock is ticking. So we see here, he said, verse, tw verse 12, even when Peter dealing with what he was dealing with, he said, I won't hesitate to continually remind you of these truths. What are the truths? Well, I just mentioned them earlier. Add to your faith virtue, to virtue self-control, to self-control knowledge, perseverance, godliness, brotherly kindness. These are the virtues he's talking about. He said, if you walk in these, I will, I will not, he said this, I won't hesitate to continually to remind you of these truths. Now here it is. He said, even though you are aware of them and are well established in them, a lot of times we like to use reminders when we forget something. But he was saying this, note to self, or a note to self is not that you, I don't want to bring it back to you because you forgot it. I, want, I don't want you to forget it, period. I want to keep it in the forefront of your thinking. So a note to self is not only when I've forgotten something, but it also prevents me from forgetting something. It's not, oh, just in case you forgot, here it is. No, it's also, it's twofold. Not only when I forget, oh, there it is, it's also telling me, so you won't forget, I'll keep it right here for you. Peter says this, I'm aware that you know what I'm saying. And, and a lot of times we got to make sure that when someone is telling us something that we already know, and this is my, my mom shared this with me years ago. Even if you already know it, it's good to be reminded of it because it stirs, stirs up what's already in you and it brings, brings a different light on something that you didn't look at it that way before. But if you get the I know spirit, oh, I know that. Yeah, I already know that. Yep, that's right, because I know that. You miss out on some things because then you, you, you get into an area of pride. And pride is a dangerous area because pride actually causes you to forget who you really are. Pride will have you, pride will have you thinking that you're someone that you're not. So humility is a great thing because humility will always remind you who you are, not in a negative way, but in a way that you're in a position, in a posture to receive. So he says this, Peter says, I, will, I won't hesitate to continue to remind you of these truths, even though you are aware of them and you are well established in present measure of the truth you already embraced. As long as I live, I will continue to awaken with this reminder since our Lord Jesus, the anointed one, has clearly revealed that my departure is near. Paul, Peter was saying this, I have gotten revelation that I am checking out of here soon. Jesus has already let me know that I'm leaving here. So <clears throat> Peter didn't sit there and ponder. That's how you doing, Peter. Man, life is short, y'all. Uh, you never know. Um, man, y'all, you know, um, man, man's life is like a vapor. And uh, I'm believing here soon. No, no, no. He, he didn't sit there and woe is me. He said, I only have so much time. So I really need to push this, push this issue. I really need to let you guys know about this. Um, Jesus did the same thing with the disciples. Jesus did the same thing with Peter. When he was like, Look, I don't have much time. I'm leaving here soon. But I want you to know, I, I, I got to go so the comforter can come. But when the comforter comes, he'll bring all these things back to your remembrance. So you have to rely on the Holy Spirit to 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 all the stuff that's been archived 
Allow the Holy Spirit to go through there and effortless, effortless, effortlessly bring things back to the forefront of your thinking. So when you are at your Red Sea, excuse me, when you are at your Jordan River and you're calling on God to open, if the God can't do that, well, yeah, he can because he did it when I was at the Red Sea. So when you're calling and you're thirsty and the water and the rock brings forth water, well, if God brought me water, he can bring me bread. And if God brought me bread, he can bring me meat. And if God took me out of a house of bondage, he can put me in a house of liberty, in a house of freedom. This is what I have to hold on to when the sun is hot and the land is parched and it seems like I can't get anything to grow. This is what I hold on to. God, you have always been there for me. Even when I didn't know you were there for me, you were there for me. So I have to flow, I have to stand on this and remind myself of these truths. That's what Paul, that's what Peter said. Peter said, I'm reminding you of these truths. What are the truths? That Jesus Christ, the anointed one, has always been there for you has loved you regardless of where you've been and regardless of how you thought of yourself and has brought you into a light where you have re revelation of who you are now. And he says, hold on to this. And if you hold on to this, you will not be barren and you will not be unfruitful. Here we go. Verse 14, Peter says, since the Lord Jesus, the anointed one has clearly revealed that my departure is near, verse 15, indeed I am passionate to share these things with you, why? So that you will always remember them after my exodus from this life. What are you saying? One translation said, when I take off this earthly tent. One translation said, when I leave this world. Why? I want you to remember things. This is an amazing thing that when people in this life, when they know their journey is coming to an end, there are certain things they share with loved ones. Why? Because they want you to remember they want you to remember, baby, I, I, mama, baby, I want you to, you know, look out for your little brother. Honey, I want you to take care of the kids. Baby, I want you to remember that God is, is all that you need. Grandma, baby, remember these words I speak to you. Why? Because these words are life. When, when, when David was on his deathbed and he was transitioning out, he told Solomon, his son, Hold to the fast, hold fast to God. Don't turn to the left or the right. Hold fast. Why? Because He's the one that's going to bring you out, give you direction, give you wisdom on how to be a king and lead His people. There you go. There were three times, sorry, four times that Peter talked about remind you, awaken your as a reminder, and always remember. Why? The importance, he wanted you to remember the importance of being confident in who God made you because you chose Christ. Why? Because days are going to be coming when you don't feel so confident. And I don't want you to go with your feelings. I want you to go with the memory of truth. Because feelings can be fickle. Now let's roll to Ezekiel. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verses 9 and 10. Chapter 11, verses 9 and 10. And, and, and Solomon has been uh, attributed to writing Ecclesiastes, uh, often refers to himself as the preacher. Uh, and he, 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 he kind of gives you a, a glimpse of his life and what he's dealing with and what he's going through and what he's pondering. Uh, several times Solomon talked about how, you know, life is a vapor. It's vanity. It's meaningless. Well, what do you mean meaningless? It means you, a man works all his life to accumulate wealth, to accumulate uh, a great house, uh, a great life, uh, income beyond measure, and then he dies and leaves it to a fool. He's like, what? To, to the point that he says, we have to make sure we keep the main thing the main thing, that we don't get so caught up in living, hold up, that we don't get so caught up and trying to uh, 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 acquire in life that we forget how to live. 
Nothing wrong with having big house. Nothing wrong with having great cars. Nothing wrong with having, uh, uh, you know, your pension fund set. Uh, kids have college funds. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with uh, um, having a vacation home. There's nothing wrong with any of those things. But keep the main thing the main thing. That after all is said and done and, and we leave this world, that stuff can't go with you. So make sure that you make sure that you hold on to the truths that you are called and chosen. That's why he said, make sure your call, your calling and election is sure. The sure part is not, I'm sure I'm, I'm almost positive. No, the sure part is, is fixed. Like an anchor to a ship in the ocean. He said, make sure that it's sure. It's steady. It does not move. It's established. Regardless of what winds blow, regardless of what storms try to give you doubt, my anchor is sure. Why? Because it's in God through Christ Jesus. Now, Ecclesiastes uh, verses 11, 9 through 10 uh, pretty much gives a synopsis of different things. He says this in verse 9. He says, I'm reading in Amplified, and I will be reading in the Easy Reader version. Amplified says it like this. Rejoice, young man, in your childhood, and let your heart be pleasant in the days of your young manhood. And walk in the ways of your heart and in the desires of your eyes. What, what you saying? Do whatever you're young and big and bold enough to do. You're young, man, go for it. Do, it said, one translation said, do your heart's desires. But it says this, but, note to self, know that God will bring you into judgment for all these things. Why? Therefore, remove sorrow and anger from your heart and put away pain from your body for childhood and the prime of life is fleeting. What are you saying? Youth, one person said like this, youth is for the young. Well, of course, it, it's saying that youth and vitality, it, it fleets, it, it, it fades away. You, you're going to grow, you're going to get strong, you're going to be vibrant, you're going to have the ability to run up four flights of stairs and still be good to go. And there may be a time come when you're like, okay, I can probably run up three flights of stairs and be good to go. Uh, and a time is going to come, I can run up two flights. And then maybe a time I can go up four steps past and that's all I can give you. Uh, why? Because time and, 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 and youth, it, it, it flows away. Um, it, it, it's, it's almost like that, that soap opera uh, that my grandma used to watch sometimes, like sand through the hourglass. So are the days of our lives. It, it's fleeting. Just like that sand through the hourglass, time continues to go. It continues to flow. You continue to grow up. You continue to grow older. You continue to, to move. But he said this, young man, rejoice in your youth. Feel good about yourself. Do all the things you want to do, but note to self, God's going to bring everything that you do, everything you thought about doing, everything that come across your heart to do, he's going to bring it into judgment. Meaning what? He's going to bring it into a, before himself and he's going to go over it. Now, easy reader, easy reader version. Why? He said, because therefore he says this, therefore remove sorrow and anger from your heart. And put away pain from your body. Why? For childhood and, and the prime of life are fleeting. Fleeting means it flies away. It goes away. I like the easy reader version because it gives a different perspective. Easy reader. E easy reader. Easy to read. Sorry. Easy to read version. I'm saying easy reader. <laughs> I'm thinking about you know Morgan Freeman on uh, Electric Company. Uh, Morgan Freeman. Sorry about it. He says, verse 9 says this on the easy to read version. So young people, enjoy yourselves while you're young. Be happy. Do whatever your heart leads you to do. Do whatever you want. But remember, note to self, here we go, that God will judge you for everything you do. If we keep that in mind, a lot of things we won't do. If we keep that in mind, a lot of things we won't think or say. Uh, a lot of things, they hit your mind. Well, Pastor, I can't stop what I'm thinking. Some things hit your mind, but it doesn't have to stay there. When it's called to th when it's called to thought is when you allow it to take root, and you begin to meditate, let it roll around in your mind. You 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 let it continue to just stay there and grow. You nurse and rehearse it. That is when it gets dangerous. I mean, a thought can pop in your mind. You say, "Man," and and with truth, you discredit that. We're not thinking that way. It pops in your mind. You say, "That's not what I prayed for." It pops in your mind. You say, "I cast that down." 
it pops into your mind. You say, you know what? That's of the devil. That is not true. And to the pure, all things are pure. And I'm walking in pureness. Boom. You knock all that down. It's not saying it won't come. It's saying when it does come, you have the word to swat all that stuff away. Now, here we go. He said, God will judge everything you do. Verse 10, he says, don't let anger control you. Oh, that's good. Why is he saying that to the young? Because apparently a lot of times in certain in instances, and when he says young, I'm going to say it like this, not so much in age, but your maturity, immature people let anger control them. Immature people let their emotions drive the bus. So he says this, don't let your anger control you and don't let your body lead you to sin. People do foolish things in the dawn of life while they are young. You ever look back or you hear, you hear sometimes you hear your uncles or your aunties or, or your grandparents look back and they talk about different things they did. You say, granddad, why'd you do that? Oh man, I was young and foolish. Grandma, what were you thinking? I wasn't thinking at all, baby. It was just something young. It was, it was foolish. I was young and foolish. What do you mean young? Young, I, I, I had the, the, the energy and the vitality to do it. And foolish, I didn't really think it through the process. I just jumped on in it. So he's saying this. He says, people do foolish things in the dawn of life while they are young. So he says, "Be the, the note to self is this. God's going to bring everything into judgment. And now, uh, now here's the thing. That part, if you're a child of God and you walk in Christ, that part you've already washed away. That part is gone. No, it, it says it right there. Yeah, it said this. It said this to an audience that had not experienced the Holy Spirit. But it still had key wisdom nuggets. Remember, rejoice in who you are, but know this. Everything that you do, there we will have to give an account for it. Everything that, one translation we talked about how God's going to bring every idle word into judgment, as Jesus said. So I must pause and allow the Holy Spirit to give me what to say. I must pause and, and here's the thing. If you, when you walk, and my wife says this a lot of times, when you walk with the Spirit so, and you are entwined with the Holy Ghost, you don't have to pause long. Some things just flow out of you because the Holy Spirit's like, I would have said that, yeah. Some things are like, yep. Kind of like when God told Adam to name the animals. God didn't tell the animal, God didn't bring the animals to Adam and say, what does it look like? This looks, almost looks like something that rhymes with uh, force. <sighs> something that rhymes with force. But it starts with an H. And have Adam, uh, horse. That's it. Yep, that's what I call it. No. He and Adam were, Adam came out of his spirit. So therefore, he already had the very essence of God anyway. So when he began to name the animals, that's what it was going to be. Because his, his spirit was God's spirit. Now, when you are born again, reborn, the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of you. And guess what? You have God's spirit on the inside of you. So there are things that the Holy Spirit will remind you of. Remember this. Look out for that. Watch out for this. Recall. Bring back to mind. And so you begin to flow and answer things as the Holy Spirit will answer things in your life. Yeah. Because you and the Holy Spirit are in step. You're in sync with each other. Now here we go. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. The Ecclesiastes chapter 12. And we're talking about... Oh, <laughs> here's another one I thought about. When we talk about remembrance. And I talked about the recall, right? Well, you know what remembrance also... Another synonym for remembrance is callback. What do you mean callback? If you're in the entertainment industry, if you, you're an actress, actor, entertainer of some sort, uh, uh, musicians, and you go to audition, you go to audition for this this gig, man. It, it, it's it's going to pay us some good money. We finally get to get the van fixed. We get to get to go on the road. This is going to be it. <clears throat> or you get called in to be uh, 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 in a sitcom and you're uh, guy number three or, or girlfriend, girlfriend, girlfriend number four 
And they call you in to do the audition, and you do your part, and you say your lines, and they read and read. I say, okay, well, thank you so much, Tony. Uh, we'll, we'll keep in touch. And you go home, and it's like, well, how did it go? I don't know. I thought I did pretty good, but then I stumbled over a couple of words, and I, man, I was really nervous, but I don't know. And ring, ring, ring. Hello? Yeah? Hey, Tony, this is this is uh, Ewald Studios. Hey, we, we love what you did in that segment, and we'd like for you to, to come back uh, for a second audition. Oh, okay. Well, great. Well, okay. Yes, sure. Yes, sir. I will do it. Boom. Hanging up. What's going on? I, got, I think I got the part. I'm going back. I got a call back. Meaning what? Meaning there's something that you did that caused them to remember you. And they said, that kid that was in here the other day, what was his name? Yeah, okay, yeah. Get him back in here. A call back. So it, it was like something that you did, something that you said, something something got their attention. And that's the thing that the Holy Spirit is going to do in our lives, is get our attention on a lot of things that we see in life. Note to self, call back this thing for him. Recall, bring her back in. Oh, okay, cool. Hmm. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13 and 14 says this. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> uh, I'm, I'm tossed. I'm, reading, I'm hesitating because I'm tossed between which version I want to read to you first. I have easy to read. I have message and I have amplified. And I think I'm going to go with amplified right now. And then we'll go back to, we'll go to the message. Amplified in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13 through 14. And, and before I go into this, I want you to type in the word remember. Type the word remember. What do you mean? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Remember now thou creator in the days of thy youth. Uh, uh, the Holy Spirit is, has the power to bring things back to your remembrance. Type remember. Just type that one word. Remember. Okay? Because it, it, the Holy Spirit is there to help you recall the things that God, that you already learned. It's not saying you haven't learned it. It's not saying you don't know it. But it's saying, you know, we need to pull the things back out of your database to bring in front of your, for, your, your forefront. A constant reminder so that when things do get tough, you, it, you'll replay it in your mind. I got to do this. I got to keep going here. So, you know, this is good stuff. Now, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13 through 14. says this and amplify when all has been heard and end look, when all has been heard the end of the matter is fear God that means worship him with awe filled reverence knowing that he is almighty God and keep his commandments for this applies to every person for God will bring every act to judgment every hidden and secret thing whether it is good or evil. Hmm. Okay, here we go. The message translation says it like this. It starts with verse 12 and it says it like this, but regarding anything beyond this, dear friend, go easy. There is no end to publishing of books and constant study wears you out so you're no good for anything else. The last and final word is this. Out of all your studying, out of all your, your, your reading, out of all the books that are being written in this world, out of all the things that have, have come and gone, uh, Solomon was referring to the word of God. This is what you got to do. The, the, there's two things that you got to do in, in life. You remember back uh, not too long ago, uh, they used to use this phrase, you had one job. You, you, you had one job. Okay, so Solomon is saying this, something similar to this. And he says this, and, and the King James said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. The conclusion means this. This is the climax. This, this is it. Out of all the things that Solomon has shared, out of all the wisdom that he has, has, has uh, poured out, out of all the things he has built, he has seen, out of all the, the, the important people that has come across his path, that has been in his court and in his presence, out of all the times he spent with God, out of all the, the love notes he's written to his wives, 
he comes up with this. It boils down to this. The last and final word is this. Fear God. Do what he tells you. <laughs> okay. Note to self. Fear God and do what he tells you. He said, and that's it. Eventually, God will bring everything that we do out into the open and judge it according to its hidden intent, whether it's good or evil. So even, even things that we hide, because sometimes people, we... we we equate hiding things with evil. But it says here, God's going to bring everything out according to his hidden intent, whether it's good or evil. Sometimes you can hide good stuff. Your intent was to bless that sister, so you didn't let anybody know about it, and you put a little money in the envelope and slid it on the door and got out of there. It was hidden. It was a good thing. And God brings all that out. He said, "You even even when no one saw it, and here's the thing that we have to hold on to. This is what this is. I think this is a character development thing. You have to be okay with no one knowing that you did a good thing. You have to be okay with no one knowing you did good, even when you did the good, and no one was around to see you do the good. You have to be okay with that. Note to self: character development. Why? Because God got it on record. Why? Because that's the one I'm trying to please anyway." Because if I did it for a purpose to go tell somebody about it, then I've received my reward. If I did it to go tell somebody about it, then I've got my pat on the back. I've got my attaboy. I've got my stroke. I got my crown. So I'm done. And then, and people that do that, they are never satisfied. Why? Because you tried to do it yourself. Allow God to get the glory, not not allow yourself to try to get the glory for you. Now, yeah. He said to sum it all up. Fear God and keep his commandments. That's the only job you got in this earth. You got one job. What's the job? Fear God and keep his commandments. Well, that's two. It's twofold. Okay? Message says it like this. Fear God and do what he tells you. Okay? That's pretty simple. Fear God and do. Just do what he tells you to do. Just, just, just do what he tells you to do. Note to self. I got to show reverence and be obedient. That's it. Give reverence and honor to God and obey his word in every aspect of his word. Because here's the thing. I can't obey what I thought God meant. He didn't say obey me, if you know, obey what I mean. <laughs> obey his word, obey what he said. Fear God and keep his commandments. Keep means... I, 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 they're part of who I am. I, I value them. They're treasures to me. And I don't, I don't take them lightly. That's, that's basically what it's saying. Now, we get into one last scripture, and then I think we're going to wrap this thing up here. And it was one of the scriptures I mentioned last week, but uh, I just s s quoted it to you. I just spouted it off to you. And the reason I'm bringing it back to our remembrance is because I want you to know where it is. I want you to be able to find the scripture and let it let it come alive to you that you can share it with someone else. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 18 through 20 and I think I was sharing some of this last week when Paul was writing to the church. Actually Paul was writing to Timothy and about what Timothy was going to share with the church. Paul wrote a letter to Timothy on, on some things, and he was wanting them, he wanted the people to get what he was saying, and so he, he gave it to his son in the gospel, his spiritual son, he gave it to Timothy, and he's like, look, that, this, is, this is some of the stuff I want you to share. Um, I think I want to... No, nah, I'll stick with it. First Timothy chapter six. Here we go. Hmm. Paul was at this time. Paul was addressing. He wanted Timothy to address the rich that were in the church, because the church is comprised of many people, different backgrounds. Different ethnicities, 
different social levels. Hey, every walk of life. Hey, there you go. Um, you come from different places, but you come together around the word. Why? For instruction, for you to have a better life. And when I say better life, I mean a, you're living it better through Christ. And you're enjoying everything that life has to offer through Christ. And what God has placed in this earth for you. Now, some have already walked into wealth and some are getting wealthy and some are receiving wealth. And Paul is talking to the church right now. Some of them are rich right now. And some of them are getting ready to walk into richness, abundance, more than enough. So Paul says this. He said in uh, the Passion, remind, I love this, here we go, reminder. Remind the wealthy to be rich in remarkable works of extravagant generosity, willing to share with others. These spiritual investments will provide a beautiful foundation for their lives and secure them and secure for them a great future as they lay their hands upon the meaning of true life. Now, here we go. Back up to verse 17. Let me give you verse 17. He said, I don't have it. Just, just back up to it. I'll read it to you in the new, new King James Version. Paul tells Timothy to tell the rich that are in the church. He says, command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty or proud, nor to trust in uncertain riches. Wait, wait, wait a minute, what? Paul says to them that are rich, I'm not condemning you that you're rich. Because some people say, oh, here, I'm rich, so I'm the bad guy because I'm the rich one in here. No, no, no. Rich is a sin. I know, I know. Money is the root of all evil. No. The love of it. Because the love is mean you, you're placing it higher than, because see, God already said to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and him only shall you serve. So when you say the love of money is the root of all evil, because the love of money causes people to do certain things. Um, money, 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 you know, strange things, strange things, you know, bad things with it. There you go. Um, he said, I command those who are rich. Not to be high-minded, not to be haughty, not to be prideful, not to be arrogant. But he says, he also says this, nor trust in uncertain riches. What do you mean? People equate money to power. And some people, because the, the, the amount of money that they have, they feel that that's the kind of power they have. And they feel they have the right to walk in. Do you know who I am? And... So because they have all this money in the bank with all these zeros behind their name, they think they're unstoppable. But all it takes is a sickness to hit your child or you to lose a job or the stock investment that you made went bankrupt, belly up. And if you use it to lose it all, then what you trusted is gone. So what I trusted is gone. What I've trusted is reduced to nothing. Therefore, I am nothing. And Paul was telling the church, no, you can have your riches. He said, but don't get it twisted. The riches don't make you. God allowed you to have that. So don't trust in uncertain riches, but trust in a certain God. Because riches are uncertain. The, the future of that can come and go. He said, but what remains the same is God. He said, so he, said, he tells them this. He said, nor trust in uncertain riches, but the living God. So let me break it down for you. He says, command those who are rich in the, this present age not to be high-minded, prideful, haughty, arrogant, nor to trust in uncertain riches, but to trust in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Note to self. God wants you to enjoy the house. He wants you to enjoy the car. He wants you to enjoy the family. He wants you to enjoy your spouse. He wants you to enjoy your vacation. He wants you to, you know, take a vacation. He, wa he wants you to enjoy your time and season in life where you are. It says here that he gives us, who gives us richly all things to enjoy. It pleases the Father to give you good things. Type the word enjoy. Type the word enjoy. 
Or you can say this. Um, God wants me to enjoy what he gives me. Type the word enjoy. It's like it doesn't matter. I, I've been I've been given all things richly to enjoy. Talk about me. I've been given. It's like tell me, good people. Talk to me. You. God has given things in your life to enjoy. There you go, sis. So type the word. She typed it in capital letters. Enjoy. God wants you to enjoy life. He gives you all things to enjoy. Now this is different. This is so different from the, the mindset of religion, because religion religion taught us. Uh, that you all you get is this and be glad for what you got because you don't know if anything else is coming ever again. So you better be thankful for that little corner you have and don't you ask for nothing else. And it's like, wait a minute. The Bible tells me that God gives me all things who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Things. And a lot of times we try to narrow this down. We try to get spiritual on this. No, he's talking about you're rich in mercy and you're rich in grace and you're rich in... He's talking about the spiritual blessings. It doesn't say that here. Because if it did, he would have told the rich people not to trust in, not to trust in their riches. There you go, sis. Say, God wants me to enjoy life. He wants me... To, he wants you to enjoy life. Note to self, note to you, me, and everybody else. God wants you to enjoy life. Life. He wants you to enjoy the trips to see the grandkids. He wants you to enjoy the trips that you and your, your, your spouse take. Now get this. My wife and I, every Sunday, every Sunday, a pastor, you can't really say that every Sunday, every Sunday, we take a drive. Whether the drive is to the corner market, whether the drive is getting on the interstate and, and going to the beach, whether the drive is, you know, we're just going to cruise to the mall. Whether the drive is, we're going to check houses. We're going to look at houses. Whether the, whatever the drive is, every Sunday, we're going on a drive. To the, I'll tell you this. To the point that my newly son in love, he already knows that when my daughter tries to call us, he said, babe, dad and mom are probably on their drive. Our Sunday drive, that's for us. Why? That's our time to enjoy. And then, I mean, there's other things that we enjoy. We enjoy, you know, going to the beach and, you know, you go shopping and, and different things that you enjoy, you know, trips to, to you know, checking, you know, trips to checking different areas in Florida out. That was our, that was our thing for this year. Our thing was, you know what, we've been living in Florida all our, most of our life because we, we were in a stint, we had a stint up in Ohio and then we came back, but, uh, for the majority of our lives, we've been in, in in Florida, and there's there's cities, there's towns, there's beaches we've never even seen, heard of, or discovered. So we're like, you know what? On a sunny drive, well, let's just shoot over here. Let's go over here. Let's try this. What do you call that? I call it enjoying life. I call it God. You know, got the gas money, put it in the tank, let's roll. And you have some people. Well, that's just wasting money. You need that gas money to go to work. Uh, okay, that's not enjoying life. Okay, because uh, I mean, labor. Um, that that's not really enjoying life. How you figure? Religion will tell you that's wasteful. No, it's not. When how, it's not wasteful, how do you know it's not wasteful? Because it clearly tells me God gives us richly all things to enjoy. And if you know my heart's intent is is to spend time with my wife, driving, buddy, you better believe He is going to make provision. For me to be able to have the gas money to drive my wife around town and our bills paid and have money in the bank and take care of anything else we have to take care of. Religion will tell you it's this or that. And God tells you it's this and this and this and this and that. That is your note that God wants you to enjoy life. And it's beautiful when you can enjoy it, especially when he gives it to you. You didn't have to steal it. You didn't have to hustle for it. You didn't have to uh, con somebody out of it. You didn't have to, you know, uh, try to deceive someone so you can enjoy life. 
He gives it to you to enjoy it fully. Now, Paul went on to say, he said, instead of the, you trying to, instead of you tr being so concentrated on the riches that you have and not wanting and, and, and uncertainty, he said, why don't you be rich in mercy? Why don't you be be rich in generosity? He said, let them be good. Let them do good that they be rich in good works. Be, be ready to give. Be willing to share. Storing up for yourselves a good foundation in the time to come. He said, if you want to show me how rich you are, show me how generous you are. Not to yourself, but to someone else. Because we don't have a problem with spending on us. God's saying, I want to see your generosity by spending on someone else. What do you mean? Because if I see you spending on someone else, that means you don't rely on that. You rely on me. Because if you, if you I think we're about to wrap this up. Because when the children of Israel was in the wilderness, now remember, we might touch on in the next couple of weeks to come, but when the children of Israel were in the wilderness, before they left, before, before Pharaoh released them, God told Moses to tell the people, go to the Egyptians. Borrow as much silver and gold as you can. Borrow as much jewels and diamonds, as you can, precious emeralds and all that good stuff as you can. Just borrow it. And they said, can we borrow it? Here, have it. Go. So here they are. The, the scholars say anywhere from 1.3 to 3 million people exodusing out of Egypt. And it wasn't just the Israelites. It was, it was other slaves and other foreign people. And even some Egyptians went with them. Here they're, they're rolling out of there. They got all this gold, got all this silver. They're high five. Yeah, we got them now. No, and you're going through a land where you can't use that money to spend on anything. There's no marketplace to buy food. There's no marketplace to buy fabric to make clothes, leather to make shoes. So even with all the money that they had, they still had to rely on God to provide for them. Even with all the money they had, they still had to put their trust in a God who provided water, bread, meat, who provided a pillow of cloud by day for shade and a pillow of fire by night for protection. They had the money, but there was nowhere to spend it. Wow. Almost sounded like a pandemic. The early part of last year, People they had people had money, but they couldn't get things. What you mean? Yeah, we could. Well, I do remember a, a toilet paper shortage. I do remember a a uh, hand sanitizing shortage. I do remember face mask shortage. I remember glove shortages. You had the money to buy, but Amazon didn't have it. You had the money to buy, but Etsy didn't have it. You had the money to buy, but Target, Walmart, everywhere else did not have it. So what did you have to do? You still had to trust God, even with the money in the bank, even with the money in hand. Yeah, how much is that? How much is that? That that eight ounce of hand sanitizer? Twenty bucks. Twenty bucks here, man. It's expensive, but you bought it. But you still have to trust God. When they say, "I'll pay you fifty bucks for a case of it, brother," we don't have anymore. We're out. Water, out. And you know what? You still had to trust God. And now that things are. We have a, 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 an abundance of toilet paper, have an abundance of paper towels, we have an abundance of hand sanitizer and disinfectant, we have an abundance of gloves and face masks, we have an abundance of, of, of vitamin C, and we have abundance of multivitamins. You still have to trust God. Note to self, whether you have met, whether you're a billionaire or a pauper, you have to trust God. Whether the money, look here, whether there's a one behind the zero, a bunch of zeros behind the one in the bank, you still have to trust God. And if there's a negative in front of that number, you still have to trust God. You never get to a place. You never get to a season. You never get to a, 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 a plateau in life, a level in life. Where you, as a child of God, you, as a believer of the kingdom, you, as a light in this world, do not trust in God. Remember, it is God that has brought you through. It is God that will continue to bring you through. It is God that allowed you, it is God that helped you win that last battle. And the fight you got tomorrow, God is going to be there too. So I won't trust, I won't trust in what I can see and feel 
I won't put my confidence in my credit score. I won't put my confidence in all the money I have in the bank. I won't put my, my confidence in my contacts and my network of people. I won't put my confidence in um, those who I think can aid me on my way to my better. Where do I put my confidence? I put my confidence in God. And I put my trust in Him. And I allow the Holy Spirit to bring back to my remembrance all my victories and all my lessons learned on this journey. Now, we're getting ready to wrap it up, but I wanted to share two things with you before we close. There's, I had this thing written down here. I'm going to read it to you. Two things I'm going to read to you. One is a quote by someone named Kabar. And it says this, the essence of life is in remembering God. The very essence of life is in remembering God. <laughs> now, the next one is this. This thing for you to think on. Here's something you to think on. The question is not, can you remember God's goodness? It is, will you remember God's goodness? Make a choice to remember. I'll say it again. It says, the question is not, can you remember God's goodness? It is, will you remember God's goodness? Make the choice to remember. Now type this for me and we get ready to wrap out. Say, I choose to remember. Just type that. I choose to remember. Wait a minute. I choose to remember God's goodness. I choose to remember his, his hand on my life. I choose to remember the grace that he's extended to me. I choose to remember the grace I've experienced by walking with him. I choose to remember those times when sickness seemed like it was trying to get a hold of me, I remember the healing that took place in my life. I choose to remember the peace that I have, even when I'm faced with chaos and I'm faced with uh, uh, people that are in my presence that are trying to make me feel less than. I remember that I am the righteousness of God. I remember that I am a child of the King. Remember that you are a daughter of Zion. You are a son of the Most High God. Even when people try to come and they try to minimize your value. Remember that, man, the King of Kings died for me. So I know I have worth. Regardless of what you may think of me, I know what he thinks of me. And the choice is this. I will remember his goodness. We know you can, but the question is, will you? Now, we, we, we pray we've said something that encourages your hearts. We pray we've said something that will, will, will provoke your spirit by way of remembrance. I choose to remember. And I say that now, and I want you to say it tonight, and I want you to say it tomorrow. Because I can choose to remember now. While you're watching me on, you know, live, you can choose to remember now. But tomorrow's another day. And you got to go to work. And you have to go to school. And you have to finish that project. And you have to turn in that assignment. And you're going to get caught in traffic. And the lady saw you standing in line at the checkout and she cut you and she just walked right in front of you. You guys say, I choose to remember. And... You take this thing back to the return counter at Target and you know you bought it at Target and they try to tell you you didn't buy it from here. And you show them the receipt and they say, well, I don't care what the receipt says. We know you didn't buy it from here. You got to choose to remember. You got to choose to remember. God is your source. He's going to keep you. He is a peace giver. So hold fast to all the things that you remember. So before we shut down, before we close out, we will offer you today, tonight, salvation. We want to offer you prayer. You, you may say, hey, hey Pastor, I, I'm, we offer you, you know, rededication. Salvation to you because you may say, I don't know how to remember stuff. I don't have that ability. I don't have that power. Well, then that means you need salvation. Why do you say that? Because if you're saved, you have the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit brings things back to your remember, remembrance to you. It, it, the Bible says that that's his job. He leads and guides you into all truth, and he brings things back to your remembrance. 
He's a comforter. He's a helper. So if you're already saved, you got it. Just tap into it. If you're not, we're here. We have people online stand by. They will pray with you. They will lead you into salvation. They give you the opportunity to, to take advantage of all the things that God wants to give you freely for you to enjoy in this life. Also, rededication. You can say, well, I have it, Pastor. I just hadn't tapped into it. We'll pray with you, reunite you with the Father. It's, it's very simple for you. Just reunite, reunite it, and it feels so good. You can be reunited back in good standing with the Father. Just as just as if you never left. That's the beautiful thing about God and His grace. You can walk back into the house and say, I'm home. And he'll say, Good. Your room is like you left it. There's food in the fridge. Dinner is at six. He's not like, oh, oh, look what the wind blew in. Oh, you decided to come back. Well, 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 well. With your tail tucked between your legs. Have a seat. We'll feed you here in a minute. No, no. God's not like that. God embraces you. And he's so glad you made it. You, you, he's so glad you come back home. And if you just need prayer, we have people on standby that will pray with you. They will agree with you on the things that, uh, that for God's will in your life, in every area of your life. We love you. And we pray God's best for you every day. And you may say, well, Pastor, you don't even know me. How can you love me? We love you with the love of God. And I don't have to know you to pray for you. I pray God's best. Pastor Andrew and I, we pray God's best not only for the members of you all, not only for the virtual congregation, we, not only for the people who watch us on live, but we pray for those that just by chance flip through there and caught it. I wasn't trying to watch you. I was trying to change it. I, I just, you know, you said something that was funny, so I thought I'd sit back and listen. Well, now that we have your attention, note to you, God loves you. And he moved heaven and earth to give you an opportunity to be with him. Now, we also move to another segment where it is part time, for, where it's time that you can invest in the kingdom. And if you want to do that, you can do that by Cash App, Giblify, you can uh, uh, mail it in. And there's different ways to do that, and it's going to come up on your screen here. We want to let you know that we appreciate your, your donations to the ministry. We appreciate you putting seed in this good ground. And we declare because you put seed in this good ground, doors open for you. Opportunities become available for you. Peace and ease are at your disposal. Oh, you're saying because I gave, that, that happens for me? Yeah. So if I don't give, that won't happen for me? I'm not saying that. I'm saying we still speak that over your life. But as Paul said in the scriptures, it's more blessed to give than to receive. Because when you're on the giving end, you are actually flowing in the things of God. What do you mean? You're putting seed in the ground and look for a harvest. You cannot look for a harvest when there has been no seed planted. And you might, at one, time, at one point in my wife and I life, you may, you, hey, look, I need to borrow some seed to put in the ground. And I'll give you that portion back, but I need to borrow seed to put in the ground so because I, I want to harvest. The Bible says, God is not mocked. Wherever man sow, that shall he also reap. And we declare that you sow abundantly so you can reap abundantly. We don't speak sparingly over your life. We speak abundance over your life. Pastor Angel, I want you to know that we appreciate the seed that you sow, cash app. We appreciate the seed that you give to the church. And we also appreciate the seed that you put in our own personal life. There's been times my wife and I, we've been, you know, in the grocery store and bling, bling, and we look and someone has, someone has, has blessed our own personal lives. And we thank God for it. We thank God for you. We, there's many of you out there who have, have sent checks in uh, uh, to us, to the ministry, and to Destiny Christian Academy. We thank you. We don't take it lightly because of your donations and your giving and your heart has allowed us to, to, to advance in many areas. Things we couldn't do before, we're able to do now because of what you've done. And we say thank you. We speak God's blessings on your life and abundance in every way. Now, we're coming to the end. God, we pray that we have said something that, that will just spark your heart, encourage you. 
Remember tonight was note to self, the power of remembrance. God wants you to remember all the victories you have and the enemy wants you to remember all the defeats that you faced. The question is this, which one will you remember? May God bless you and keep you. Please remember that here every walk of life, Jesus is Lord. And it's about where you're going, not where you've been. Good people, God willing, we will see you on Sunday. Blessing. Love you so much.